What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, I wanna talk about 14 different products slash niches that in my opinion, if you're a beginner, so this is from a beginner's perspective, if you're an experienced seller on Shopify and dropshipping, then you probably don't need to watch this video. However, if you're a beginner and you're still looking for a product or niche to go into, in my opinion, you should be avoiding the things on this list because it's gonna save you some time, it's gonna save you some money, and it's also gonna save you a lot of heartache as well. Without any further ado then, let's jump straight into the first one, which has to be close. If you're dropshipping close, then expect a lot of time to be put into customer service. This is gonna be receiving returns, doing exchanges. There's gonna be a lot of logistics involved and keeping track of what returns come back from who. Are you gonna provide free returns for people and send out prepaid postage labels? All that sorts of thing. There's just gonna be a whole headache of things to manage. And if you're a beginner, especially if you're looking to get into dropshipping for Q4 and try and make some money as quickly as possible, dropshipping close is is a no-go in my opinion because it just comes with a whole added kind of plethora of things which you need to worry about and take care of. What also goes along with clothes is shoes. Again, people try on different sizes of shoes. When you're ordering from China, it's really difficult to find sizes that match the UK ones because everybody, even with the big name brands, like I wear size 10 and a half in Nike trainers, but if it's Adidas, it's 11s. If it's like smart shoes and sometimes it's even 10s, it all depends on how wide the shoe is, how long it is. Everybody has that interpretation of what a UK 10 is or a UK 11 is. When you then add kind of like a cross border complication to that if that's even the right way of describing it but it, when you're trying to get a different country who then has their own sizing system and they then try and convert that into the uk system it's just going to be a nightmare basically stay away from shoes number three is trademarked items so this includes anything that's branded don't try and sell anything that's nike from aliexpress um, and don't try and sell anything knockoff either if there's somebody on aliexpress selling knockoff yeezys it can be really tempting to try and capitalize and see an opportunity there it's gonna be a headache. Again, you're probably gonna get annoyed customers and you're also gonna annoy the platforms in which you're selling on. Most platforms don't like you to do that. So your time is always gonna be limited. It's gonna be a ticking time bomb. And once they do discover what you're doing, they're gonna shut you down. Next, we have breakables. So this is anything made, it's any kind of like pottery, like mugs or vases, any kind of glassware. Now this can be a really lucrative niche. It can be a great niche to drop ship. But again, all of these things are from a beginner perspective. So I'm trying to make things as simple simple as possible for you. Stay away from things that are breakable or more easily breakable than I should say during the shipping process, because again, it's gonna to lead to more customer service that you have to do, more replacements, exchanges, that sort of thing. So try and stay away from anything made out of glass or anything made out of clay, like pottery and that sort of thing. This also includes things like pictures as well. So if you wanna sell canvas prints that come all the way from China, good luck trying to get it from China without it getting a rip in, without it getting tear, without it getting punched make sure you find a print on demand supplier or a poster supplier or a poster printer in your local country. The next one is going to be cheap products. So stay away from any products that you can't sell for more than 20 pounds. The reason being is because advertising costs are getting more and more expensive. And I advise all the people I work with to sell a products that you have at least 20 pounds room in. So what this means is that if you buy the products for two pounds, you have to be able to sell the products for 22 pounds as a very minimum. If you avoid any cheap products like this what it's going to do is it's going to give you a lot more breathing space for your marketing costs to acquire that customer and be able to make a profit on the front end if you want to increase your chances as much as possible work on 30 pounds so what this means is that if you buy products for 10 pounds you need to be able to sell it for at least 40 pounds the advantage to this as well is that when you're buying products for 10 15 20 pounds cost to you then you're going to be selling a lot higher quality products which in turn is going to lead to happier customers the next one is common sense one which is offensive items these are things like weapons knives BB guns, that sort of thing. Lighters as well, it's gonna be a difficult one. It's also gonna cause headaches in terms of um, at customs, trying to get things like that through customs. Stay away from anything smoking related, anything tobacco related. Again, especially on Facebook, I'm not 100% sure to be honest on platforms like TikTok and Google. Um, however, I know Facebook, it's a no-no to be honest, anything to do with tobacco and pretty much anything to do um, that's alcohol related as well. Um, I did try and sell a couple of years ago this drinking game because the student market is such a brilliant market but it was just such a headache with getting certain ads 
banned because you have to come across as like you're not encouraging um, binge drinking and it's, kind of, it's just a big gray area basically so like I said if you're a beginner keep it simple stay away from anything offensive stay away from weapons tobacco and alcohol next we have heavy items so personally I'd stay away from anything that's sort of heavier than a kilo or two kilos don't try and drop ship dumbbells or gym equipment or kettlebells that sort of thing from China it can be done but it's just gonna cause headaches in my opinion with the shipping and it's also gonna be quite expensive too. With those sorts of things as well, what you can usually find is a lot of suppliers on eBay um, and there's actually some drop shipping people in the UK. I know for a fact there's suppliers basically in the UK that instead of buying one or two dumbbells or kettlebells or whatever at the time, they'll get a whole container shipped over so that shipping cost is split between everything and then they'll be able to drop ship and send directly UK to UK for you. So you can drop ship these things, but don't do it from China. Next, we have generic boring items. Um, so this is really difficult to be specific on, but it's basically an item that has no specific audience for. So the example I want to use is watches. Unless your watch is made for a specific person so you could sell a bamboo watch which is advertised at people who are maybe environmentally conscious or you could sell a horse watch which is advertised towards people who are interested in horses i'll try and put a picture up on screen if i remember to do so um, of just a generic watch if you just try and sell a generic chinese watch it's going to be really difficult to get attention on a social media platform or on any platform in my opinion and convince somebody to buy your watch versus somebody else's so try and stay away from just boring generic products that don't get attention and products that don't have that usp that unique selling point next we have complex electronics or complex technology so things like robotic mowers um, lawn mowers or robotic vacuums or drones as well might be one um, especially if it's a really expensive drone i've seen a lot of people make money in things like this i've made a bit of money in robotic um, vacuums a few years ago when they sort of come onto the scene and you can make money like i said but as a beginner i would suggest keeping it simpler than that and cheaper than that too so these robotic vacuums they were 100 120 pound cost to me to get it delivered to the customer i was selling them for 300 pounds so the profit margin sounds really good but because it's a robotic vacuum and because it's complex the customer service involved was such a headache you get so many emails from people who saying it didn't work and it's because they haven't charged it or asking how to put it into a certain mode because they wouldn't read the instruction manual or asking for individual replacement parts because they've been broken in transit or whatever it may be. It's just such a, again, a plethora of things that you have to take on um, as well as just worry about selling the product. So keep it simple, stay away from expensive, complex tech. Next we have consumables. So if you're drop shipping from China, stay away from anything somebody has to put in their mouth um, or anything somebody has to eat. It's generally pretty good and pretty safe, but why would you open yourself up to those risks? Stay away from anything especially if it's like weight loss related or stuff like that because there's different kind of um, regulations in the UK versus the US versus China. In China, they might not be clued up to them, especially if you haven't got a reputable supplier and you, if you, unless you know exactly what the ingredients are and you're really clued up on that sort of thing, stay away from it because the last thing you want um, is to harm somebody and then have to answer to uh, answer up to that. This brings me nicely on to the next one, which is safety equipment. So stay away from things like helmets, things like climbing equipment. That would be a big no-no in my opinion. Generally, you're gonna be pretty safe, um, but you never know why open yourself up to that. Last thing you want to do if you're drop shipping helmets, somebody has an accident in your helmet and they seriously harm themselves and your helmet hasn't been made to the right um, specification or UK regulation and it should never have been sold or should never have gotten into this country because they won't check it necessarily at customs you're going to be liable for that and if you try and get your Chinese supplier to answer for that and and pay for any damages good luck with that so again stay steer well clear in my opinion of any sort of safety equipment um, at least until you have experience and you have a reptile supplier next up we have cosmetics a similar story to consumables really um, I mean, I stay away from cosmetics because it doesn't interest me, but cosmetics are also super, super competitive and people, at least from my experience, they tend to go with big name brands um, 
because they buy not necessarily because of how good the cosmetic is but because of what celebrity is wearing it or who's made it or whatever it may be it's very kind of brand heavy but again with cosmetics you never truly know what's going to be in the ingredients especially if you're selling cheap ones so you don't know how it's going to react to people's faces and again if you burn somebody or they come up with a nasty rash or they need some sort of treatment and they try and kind of put that on you and there's comebacks again good luck trying to get your supplier to answer up for it last but certainly not least we have waterproof products this can be a dodgy one because if you're selling for example pouches for people to put their phones in and you're claiming it's waterproof and it's not waterproof and it damages their 1000 pound phone or 600 pound phone whatever it may be again good luck trying to get your chinese supplier to foot the bill for that it's going to come to your doorstep and you're going to be the one that has to sort that out so stay away from any kind of waterproof products this goes as well for products that float pretty safe to be honest if there's a, an amazing product and it's you're really passionate about it then by all means go for it just make sure you do your due diligence in terms of research um, and testing of the product yourself but again, if you're trying to sell a product that floats, that attaches to somebody's keys so they don't lose it when they go sailing or whatever it may be, and it falls in the water, God forbid, and they lose their keys or their phone because it doesn't flow or it doesn't connect, it loses attachment. Again, you could be the one that's footing the bill for that. And you're going to be the one that gets the angry customer trying to get hold of you. And so with that being said, then guys, that is all 14 products slash niches, which you should be avoiding if you're a beginner, in my opinion. I just want to reiterate, I'm not saying you can't make money in these niches that's not the story i'm just trying to make your life as easy as possible by putting you down a route which is a lot simpler and it's going to be less headaches for you if you enjoyed the video and want to see more of my content make sure you hit that subscribe button now drop me a like as well if you enjoyed this one so i know what kind of content you guys want to see and thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one